ಅವರೇ ದೀಪ you don't hear you deepa your sound is off okay so good morning all so my name is deepa dilwani and i am phd student at ai institute i will be presenting this uh, paper called brain gb a benchmark from brain neural network analysis with graph neural networks so this paper has been recently published and uh, like everyone have been into a life phase when you are thinking that you are out of thoughts but isn't it magical that uh, you read a lot you study a lot and you talk to someone you talk to your advisor and you and boom the idea came up so it's about like a thought of analyzing these kinds of uh, uh, these kinds of analysis and doing that so starting with like why this paper so uh, authors suggested that there is no uh, no benchmark available for analyzing the brain neural networks with the with graph neural graph using graph neural networks so they have uh, designed a technique and a framework for standardizing all the process including the preprocessing uh, pipelines and the analysis of brain networks using the uh, graph neural networks so i will be walking through all these points preliminaries brain network data construction gnn and experiments discussion and extension so let's start with the preliminaries so as we are like human brain is a very complex system it consists a lot of regions and there are a lot of uh, uh like process going on while if there is a single thought also so there is a need of uh, there is a need of analyzing these regions and analyzing like how these interactions are uh, responsible for the uh, some disorder so for analyzing this uh, any kind of uh, disorders in the brain we need some structure to analyze the, these things so uh, the authors used is that the, they try to implement a graph neural network which is composed of nodes representing the regions and then the edges representing the interaction between those regions so what they have taken is that they are saying that they have a whole data set where n is the subject and d is the uh, input of that data set and in that gn like here it is mentioned that gn will be the brain network of that subject n and yn will be the prediction of label a uh, prediction of label let's say that uh, there is some neural diseases or if we want to uh, predict predict like the what is the activation over there so these kind of prediction labels will be there now the properties how they defined is that they will be defining the graph neural network on the region of interest so region of interest is something that uh, when they when they want to study uh, like a particular region in the brain responsible for some specific task so they design their graph neural networks according to their tasks and they are calling it the region of interest and they stated in the paper that their en will be the difference across each of the subjects and it it consists that en will be consisting of the weighted uh, weights that will be represented by wn and these are the connection strengths between the region of interest uh that is basically the correlation so uh that is represented by wn and then there is an like output yn uh that can be used for the analysis of biomarkers or the prediction of the labels now uh what is graph neural network so graph neural networks uh is we have seen like uh in the real world examples that there are graph structures where which can be used like uh if you want to model some of the gene prediction or knowledge graphs you can say or any uh, biological dna testing these all th these are the all domains where graph neural networks are being used but uh, let me go through once like uh, we have a v a node or the vertex co we called and then we have edges which are connecting these nodes and uh, we have to analyze like how these like what are the entities and how these relationships are formed between them so uh, like if there is an initial representation of each node it can be passed through a neural net graph neural network and which will represent exactly the same output like the structure of the input node but uh, with the information and that information we can use for the uh, specific uh, prediction or the task specific uh, predictions now these graphs can be directed edge or the indirected edge so uh, the i mean that these can be weighted so in brain uh, in brain we are always always want to see the direction of the regions so 
and then we can create like the embeddings between these uh, embeddings between the with these nodes and the vertices nodes and the edges sorry so we uh, so we go through the graph neural networks but uh, the uniqueness of brain network is something which we have to modify our graph neural networks because uh, in the initially when we are defining any brain network then uh, a lot of the researchers face a problem like that the initial node what will be the region of interest of that brain network and what will be the accurate model to check the predictions of the disorder analysis so this is the this is the problem like which we have to cover in the graph neural network and design a network like that that it can uh, it can specify a specific region of interest and then now each brain node will be having like both positive and negative values in the functional connectivity each each of the uh, region of interest like in the brain like if we are considering some of the atlas so each atlas have like specific regions and they will be fixed for all the data sets and if you want to customize uh, that uh, that thing to uh, implement the uniqueness of brain network so we need to be very careful about designing a, a graph neural network so there are some challenges of course in designing a graph neural network that uh, brain is very like vast connection area and we have to uh, process process all the uh, process all the mri like the raw mri and then first of all we don't have like a fixed pipeline that can process directly because there are multiple softwares available for pre processing and each of the researcher use like uh, they are like in in what they are familiar about so like let's say example that spm and fne2 so these are the two uh, softwares that are available for uh, pre processing of the pipe uh, pre processing of the raw mri but again that depends on how they are pre processing it and then the next thing is that uh, raw data set is not available and there is no such pipeline which can uh, which can create a baseline of it for the graph neural networks so that's why there is a need of creating a framework that can uh, do the brain network analysis and create create a baselines for the uh, neural networks so this is what the researchers have suggested that these they are taking two types of uh, mri images that is fun functional mri and then the structural mri or dmri so uh, they are pre the these two domains have like different pre processing pipelines and first they are pre processing it with their um, with their package which they have defined in this paper and then they defined like four modules of this package which we are, we are going to discuss in details but for the introduction these four modules are node features message passing attention enhanced message passing and then graph pooling now uh, they are using this graph pooling output for the prediction of any neural diseases or if they can define any biomarker so this was the like preliminary now we can see like how they are constructing their network uh, their uh, their data set construction so uh, let's just an introduction about like how, what is neuroimaging so uh, we have several techniques uh, for collecting data from the brain those are mri eeg pet ct etc but uh, these functional mri and dti like the basically the uh, magnetic resonance imaging called mri is the most widely used and commonly used uh, between the researchers and uh, fmri and dti are the sub parts of the uh, mri domain now functional uh, brain image is is where we can detect the correlation where the brain is activated for the certain task so this was the image i got from internet and like they are doing performing task and they can see that uh, there are some activations in the brain whereas uh, in the diffusion tension ima imaging we can see the flow of uh, the water in the brain on the cert certain tasks like it is shown here while doing a certain task now uh, of course there are challenges in these data set construction because raw mri is not very usable for the deep neural networks like for directly usable then it needs a complicated pipeline which includes several steps and these several steps are depend depend on the researchers now uh, so the what, what do they mean by modalities uh, distinct across modalities which modalities they are talking about so we have this like uh, fmri and dmri and then we have eeg data set and pet data set okay so, so, these the, are the so the data type uh, different different uh, you know ways of capturing yeah. data okay fine. yeah different ways of capturing data hmm. so yeah so they are saying that it is very distinct for each of the modality that we have to pre process data sets according to the modalities hmm. and each each software have their own functionality and there is no software available for dmri as they are stating 
So this is uh, this is just an overview of the how fMRI is being processed. So it it is a on the left hand side it's the process pre-processing pipeline, and on the right right hand side these are all the softwares which are available for uh, pre-processing it. So each software will be requiring uh, the requiring uh, time to learn and uh, investment like there is a large investment of learning the software. So, but uh, for the overview of it, I am going through like uh, a functional fMRI data processing that uh, first we need to remove all the voxels uh, which are which are not necessary for the analysis. Then they have to uh, fix the time slicing correction if it is taken in like the different time and it is not uh, all the tasks are not taken at the once. And if there is any motion movement, like if they are moving their heads and if there is any movements in their eyes, we have to fix that movements also. And there is like uh, a need of uh, localization of of like aligning all the part participants in the same uh, brain atlas and normalizing those uh, atlases, then smoothing smoothing of the voxels, like averaging across each of the voxels. So and and after that, defining a re region of interest. So it is like a difficult process to pre-process the MRI or any kind of uh, any kind of uh, neural modality. So this is a similar kind of uh, similar kind of pipeline for DMRI, but it is different. Like I will be not oh, like it's just an overview. I just put it here, but it will be similar to that only. So uh, we 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 talked about like what are the uh, preliminaries and how data set is being constructed. Now I'm going to talk about like uh, why graph neural network is used for the baseline of brain network analysis. So this is a recap from the first slide, like their uh, what they have proposed. So there are node features. So node features are the structural information of the brain network. And these are the regions. And we can see these regions can be defined as a single node. And uh, we can define uh, the connections between these nodes as the edges. Now, what is happening here is that we want to see that what are the regions which are like uh, close to them and what messages are they are passing. So in message passing, they are just averaging all the all the all the messages which they are getting from their uh, from the neighbor neighbor neighborhood nodes like the neighborhood regions, and then uh, doing analysis on them. I have and a, I have a I have a live question. Uh, is this message passing uh, any related to signals uh, across neurons or across the brain region or something else? What what does it really capture from a perspective of fMRI uh, based scanning of brain? So it is across the brain region. Like uh, there are different brain regions and uh, how they are connecting with each other. Then each of the node is a brain region? Yeah, each of the node is the brain region. And is uh, uh, are you going to essentially uh, 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 kind of, uh, what you call, root these in um, a, in a class that has identified all the brain region uh, for consistency across things or are they created for the individual subject? So uh, so it is specific, like task specific. We have to define region of interest. Uh, let's say we are trying to get some language tasks. So if you want to analyze those language tasks, then there are specific region for the, those language tasks. So first we have to define a, a like model we can say for the region of interest. And then we can check like what are the connections between the edges and what how they are uh, doing their message passing between so, them, how so those you, edges. So in the pre-processing, you would be uh, explicitly uh, uh, asking the system to ignore the parts that are not relevant or you, you know you, you think so, are related to language task or something in pre-processing we have to process the whole mri image but uh, when we are doing the analysis we can define the region of interest okay and so yeah. you'll, you'll be masking out parts that are not interesting uh so we have to just yeah you can say that but just we have to select the regions those are interested okay and do you think that do you understand uh, how this pooling works and how it preserves some meaning or semantics uh, between the you know uh, the the different inputs that come into this pooling layer no they didn't discuss about this thing because that is central right that's the output so you need to be able to understand really uh, how um, uh, you know it's like uh, i always uh, find um, uh, you know merging of the vectors uh, uh, very rudimentary uh, for example right that's i, I had always problem with that um uh combining two vectors you know and 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 um, expect that it would have some semantics where the two vectors are created separately um and uh, don't have a particular structure uh so it becomes just a gross statistical information uh and the same thing may happen here where you are doing this pooling uh, where uh, you have these inputs coming and uh they may not be well aligned 
Um, and when you connect, when you, when you superimpose them, you get something that you won't be able to understand in the context of the input that you're giving. So I have to look into that, but uh, these after like after what they are doing, like after the pooling strategies, they are using a normal MLP, multilayer precipitant for the prediction. Mm. That, that's fine. It's the point is that, that what you're doing MLP on is uh, it's very important that that data is well understood and is faithful to the, uh, you know, the, the leftmost input of the fmri and the mri uh, thing uh, the, that needs to be captured you know in a in a way i would say semantically as opposed to just saying there's this lit up here uh, uh, and, and particularly when you're combining uh, the two data uh, you know uh, so 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 they are not combining two data so they are defining different pipelines for these two structures so they want to benchmark a pipeline that can analyze uh, like brain imaging data but what is the meaning when you in the figure you say message passing and uh, attention uh, enhanced message passing and then you're uh, taking uh, you know both of them and, and bringing bring into pooling what does it mean so these are the different modules they have defined in their uh, paper so message passing is a one module either we can use this or the attention enhanced message passing so these are two different modules now in the message passing they are just using a central load as a like as a representation and concating all the other messages from other regions and in the attention enhanced message passing these are weighted nodes yeah so, so, so you know uh, i'm looking at kaushik's um, clarification and kaushik that's what i'm really looking for the last sentence that you say here that is what i'm looking for for me without uh, that kind of understanding of alignment or uh, you know what uh, they signify um, in terms of whatever you're studying uh, you know uh, it does not make, you know, you, you find some pattern without being able to interpret that pattern to the real world. Uh, and that's what I'm looking for. Anyway, continue. Okay. So, yeah. So, these are like different modules and uh, attention enhanced passing is something which have the edge, edge, uh, edge weights and they are then learning on those edge weight weights and aggregating upon on all these weights. Then in the pooling strategies, uh, they are saying that it's a final node over here and they will be representing all the brain regions on the graph level representations for the classifiers, which can be used in the next step, like a normal classification layer. So it's, it's uh, now in the node feature construction, they defined uh, five things, identity, eigen, degree, degree profile, and connection profile. Now what identity is that, it's it's for the it it would be the unique for each of the feature. Let's say a uh, unique ID which we defined uh, for each patient. So it will be like each each node have a unique ID, and then uh, they are saying that they are going to perform a weighted matrix and eigen decomposition on all the all the vectors of the each node, and degree will be something like how many inputs uh, inputs of on a single node is, and degree profile is. Uh, of a single load, like uh, how many it will be for the single load and like uh, concatting all the like all the degrees from the neighboring node also. And then connection profile is defined as the uh, weighted edge matrix of each node. Now in the message passing, they they defined uh, these different types of message pass, passing uh, functions like edge weight, bin concat, edge weighted contact, concat, uh, node edge concat and node concat. So these are like five different types of concatting uh, mechanism they are defining. But the main idea is that they are just taking a single node and checking all the messages from the neighboring nodes, or we can say the neighboring brain regions and uh, concatting the message in, on that single node. That's message passing module. Then in the attention mechanism message passing, again, they are uh, defining four types of attention mechanism message passing and each each of uh, each of them is like different, like with attention or the it's them or without attention. So, uh, so the main idea is that if these are the weighted weighted edges, then it can be uh, it can be defined by this function alpha ij, and then concat it concat on a single node. And in the pooling strategies, uh, they are defining three kind of pooling strategies: that the mean pooling, sum pooling, and the concat pooling. So in the mean pooling, they are just um, taking a mean of all the all the neighboring uh, nodes. In the sum pooling, they are summing up all the neighboring nodes. 
and in the concat pooling they are concatting each of the uh, nodes into a single and then generating a gn graph so these were the uh, like uh, their model defined for the an brain network analysis how they define their uh, model now we will be talking about the experiments so they have taken four kind of data set to uh, analyze uh, their pipeline they have took all these different kind of data set because they want to standardize a process that's why they took different data sets and then these were the results across like all of the uh, data sets like the four data set with a matrix accuracy f1 auc and these will be like a uh, table for the different data set they have taken and then the results will be like that in each of their model they define like which of the uh, which of the model layer is like defining which doing well so they, in the node features they define that their connection profile is ach achieving the uh, highest accuracy in the message passing they define that the node contact is achieving highest accuracy in in the attention what is the, uh, message, deepa what is the reference do they have to say something is high quality or wrong or not, not i mean is that um, you know you can do all that statistical but how does it map to the real world to the uh, uh, you know actual physical phenomena how is that is that done here or is it some Uh, yeah so uh, they have used these two baselines uh, these are also like uh, in the last 3 or 4 years papers so other than that they didn't uh, define any reference for their baseline methods and they are saying that uh, in comparison in comparison of these baselines their models are performing well okay hmm yeah. uh, the, the, the um these need to be grounded uh, in um, you know whatever uh, cognitive or clinical understanding we need to have of the brain and are they are they that do you have some idea i don't i don't understand this at all as to what does it mean to perform better and um, uh, you know why would they be uh, more indicative of uh, let's say oh somebody's brain is working better for this task than somebody else's brain or that uh, Uh, you know the ideal way where you can define a person to have. Um... So, Doctor Shet, there is a difference between the brain analysis and uh, defining a cognitive process. So, these I can say that these are two different things. And with this paper, they just try to analyze what their connectivities in between the brain and how these connectivities are uh, performing on the task is specific. And okay. uh, what you are saying is that uh, it is something, something uh, like. which is like cognitively understood and which cannot be explained by this uh, paper okay no that's a good yeah. good uh, fair uh, input i would you know my i i would hope that there are there is work uh, that our interest would be in working on something that have clinical relevance so i can do clinical assessment uh, i could say can i predict um, uh, you know the language loss in aphasia patient can i predict uh, moca score uh, based on you know this imaging or at least part of it may be based on this imaging study those are the kind of thing eventually uh you want to uh take away the subjective uh, aspects of um uh analysis or data collection analysis in clinical assessments and make it a little bit more objective based on uh you know this kind of uh, studies and that would be ex very exciting if we can do that yeah so these uh, these all data sets is like the prediction of any brain disorder and then if they are able to identify like from the male and female those are the classification labels for these data sets so these okay. are not something uh, cognitively defined cognitively defined problem but i think uh, the, uh, so does it mean here that for, with the parkinson's progressive marker initiative uh, they are saying that um, uh, for such a task uh, we understand how this study is helpful uh, yeah so they are saying that we can use graph neural networks for analyzing that and then uh, like predict a correct label for it okay yeah. deepa uh, can yeah. you go back to the previous slide yeah this one uh, no no the one you were with the, all the numbers Did the other commented on um so if you look at the uh the uh, auction there a a u c um for the four different that i said let's say four not features so it goes from seventy five to sixty five and all the way to ninety one um person did they commented about why they would expect to that about one would give sixty five percent and ninety one percent these are huge differences they did they, they provide some insight on why uh, some perform some the a b c d for example that i said was giving su such good performances no no they didn't they just stated that uh, 
the in the ABCD that is outperforming the other data sets. Yeah, I mean anybody can come to that conclusion seeing the yeah. number <laughs> they, they, they didn't provide the insight. Okay. Yeah, but I, I'm guessing that uh, you know you, you, it would be good to explain that connection profile uh, is a better measure, uh, and uh, and for that uh, we get a very good result. I mean it it, it is it, it uses the data that you're capturing in a more effective way, and that's why it is giving better results. Something along that line. Yeah, but they didn't specify it for the single data set. If we see the accuracy of uh, AUC or accuracy, it's more than other three data sets. So they just stated that it is this data set is outperforming other three data sets. That's all. Okay. Yeah. So till now we discussed why, what, and how. So now is like the discussions, discussion and extension of this work. So in the, the contribution of his, this work is that they are defining a pipeline which can standardize the pre-processing of the uh, brain imaging data set. And they are defining a graph neural network analysis, which they are, they are saying it's modular, scalable, and reproducible. And the construction pipelines are for the two type of modalities. First is functional and the second is the structural, uh, structural brain MRIs. And now they define like four types of uh, modules in which they are using the node features, message passing mechanism, then attention mechanism and pooling strategies. And this all they suggests that, that it can be a baseline for all the graph neural networks and they can be used and reproduced from these four type of data set, but they, the, it can be extended on the uh, different tasks and different data set which researchers want to use. But still there are some limitations uh, for this work that, uh, the pairwise connection in the data set is still unknown. Like what? Like why was that AUC uh, value was high? They didn't know that. This was first of the limitation what I have got from this. And the another limitation is that uh, the sample size of neuroimaging data. So there are for sure publicly available neuroimaging data, but the sample size for the deep learning models for uh, generalizing any uh, model is still a limitation. Great, Deepa, good job. Um, so, so for defining these limitations, they have uh, also mentioned some future directions that uh, there is a hope of define, like developing a neurology driven uh, graph neural network. And we can just concat or concat different kind of brain structures or brain uh, data set and cohorts and can use that for pre-training or transfer learning of the uh, GNNs. And these are the resources if someone want to use and try out like how this graph neural network for brain data set is working. So they uh, provided some of the tutorials and examples and their Python package, which is publicly available right now. Thank you. Great. Uh, uh, I think it was interesting. Uh, uh, you know, the intuition as I've been always talking about that uh, uh, the graph uh, based formalism is richer than vector based and we should try and anyway, good to see something along that line. Um, uh, also, the discussions in the chat has been very interesting this time. So thank, thank you all for participating in a fairly um, interesting chat discussion. Uh, I want to uh, jump to um, something, you know, uh, Biplo recently went to a conference and um, has some very interesting thing to share. So Biplo, if you are okay, uh, please take over. <laughs>